You know, when going in for a sale, there's a few things that you wanna make sure that you check off. Because in my opinion, sales can only happen or a close can only happen in the right time or at the right time, right? And I think that oftentimes most sales are missed because the close is, is sought after way too soon in the engagement. And so there are a few things that you could check off the list or at least maybe write these things down to ensure have been covered before you have any attempts to make a close. So if you want to help increase your current close ratio, if you're having issues with getting sh you know kicked back more often than actual compliance, then you're going to want to watch this full video. Not only that, but you're also going to want to make note and pay minds to these few things that you're going to want to check off. Let's go. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about the very few things that you need to ensure are covered before you make an attempt to close your sale. You see, again, as I mentioned, I think in my opinion, a lot of sales are, are missed, they're lost, they're ignored or they're overlooked because too often times, the salesman just goes right in for the kiss way too soon. Like they're the, you know what I mean? Like they're that rude dude. Who just who just you know has no respect over women and just goes right in for the kiss without even considering now mind you some of these customers are like them hood rats some customers are hood rats and they don't care they're ready to buy you know what I mean like they come in wet just wet wet and that's okay that's them you know but to but more often than not a lot of the consumers are the very conservative girls right and I'm using this this analogy because I want you to understand the difference um, between making a sale is actually kind of like creating a relationship. And I think too often times a lot of people get turned down, whether it's for yes, they'll buy or for a phone number because they just go in unsmoothly. Then they're, they're not smooth when they go in for it. And to be smooth, you need to be able to time it right. You need to make sure that the other party is ready for what you're trying to go in for. So needless to say, that thing still applies here to sales. And when we go in for the close, there's a few things that we need to cover and ensure that we we uh, have been, or we want to make sure that have been checked off before we ask for the sale. Number one is the irony of it is you don't ask for the sale. You never want to ask for the sale. You don't ask for a close. By the time that you go in for the close, it is timed so correctly that you don't need to ask for it. You see, in my opinion, I believe that from the get go, you need to have the assumption and talk with the assumption. When I say talk with the assumption, I'm talking about like, you're already speaking as if, kind of like past tense, kind of, right? Like where you're, you know, you, you replace with like, if you're gonna buy with when you're gonna buy. Well, when we start, right? You're already assuming like it's gonna happen. And the, the wording has to be planted in that way because you're gonna talk to their subconscious. And at the end of the, uh, of the actual sales pitch, you don't need to ask for the sale because you've done it so correctly, you've planted these seeds so correctly that by the time it, it, isn't, it is time to go in for the close, you're already assuming it and you're, clo you're, you're beginning the closing process. And so you wanna ensure that right from the very beginning, you have this feeling, this assumption that you are going to make the sale. And, 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 and the easiest way to make this happen is change your mindset, right? You have to be able to change your mindset on two different parts. Number one is you gotta stop thinking, what if they don't buy, right? What if they don't buy? That's something that I think a lot of salesmen have a challenge that sits in their head and it affects our tonality, affects our rhythm and our momentum. Instead, I want you to think the, these words. What will happen if they don't buy, right? <laughs> what will happen if they don't buy? And I'm not talking about to you. Don't talk. Don't think about your commission. Little sub note. Little side note. You know that's another thing. You don't want to think about what will happen if they don't buy to you. Like your commission, your income, your loss of sale. You're gonna miss your quota, right? Because that's just gonna come off in your delivery, and you're gonna get anxious. You're gonna get desperate. More importantly, you're gonna get irritated, agitated, and frustrated. And naturally, we tend to express those those emotions through our tonality. So you want you want to avoid that. But what I'm talking about is you want to think about what will happen if they don't buy, like to them. And ultimately what that means is their alternative. You see, you want to paint the picture of what their alternative is. Their alternative is where they're at right now, meaning they came to you for a reason. And typically that reason was either to find pleasure, right? To gain pleasure, increase their status, gain some sort of pleasure or avoid pain. 
You see, there are two emotions that rule all sales. It's pleasure and pain, that's it, right? It's pleasure and pain. At the very core of it, they're, they're looking for pleasure because they want their status to be increased, they want a higher status, or they're trying to avoid pain. A pain. They want to avoid decreasing their status. And I got plenty of content, I won't dive too deep into that because that's more psychological. But what you wanna do is you wanna be able to identify um, what will happen if they don't buy. So if they came to you and their goal, right, what they wanted to do was, of course, a lot of them in my industry, they just want a lower rate. And see, I've trained myself to hear that in a different way. When, when they say they want a lower rate, what they mean is they want more monthly cash flow. They wanna be able to save a couple bucks. And so I quickly learned how to uh, kind of relearn the way I, I hear that. I hear that request, right? Because it's a, it's a common request. And the way I used to hear it was I want a lower rate and I would immediately think because I'm, a, I'm in a servant-oriented industry is to deliver what they want, right? That's how you do the sale. Well, it's actually not. Um, you know, what you, what you want to deliver is what they need. And so you have to listen deeply and ask the right questions. So, so you have to be able to identify, well, what will happen if they don't buy today? So what will happen if they don't buy today is basically they're opting for the alternative, which is to continue down the same path that they're on right now. And sometimes you just need to remind them that their alternative is to pay more than they need to, is to not clear themselves of, of, of all their debt, is to not uh, create the cash flow to turn the track around and put them back on track, right? Is to prepare themselves to have a stronger FICO, a stronger balance in their checking and savings, a stronger mindset through security of knowing that they could provide and that they're taken care of just in case. So that safety precautions, so you wanna make sure that you identify what those parts are and always leverage that, right? Because at the end, if in the event they hesitate for the close or they try to back off and say, hey, I wanna think about it, say, yeah, no worries, I completely understand. That's that's rule number one, is you don't wanna argue with them. You know, the, the second that you feel, or the, I'm sorry, the second that your opponent, which is your prospect, feels that you're antagonizing them, like you're trying to make belittle them or make or make them feel like they're not as smart as you is the second that your sale is lost because then it becomes a challenge. Then it becomes a debate and there's nothing that goes well from coming from an argument. I've never argued myself into a sale, ever. And I've been doing this for a very long time. You see, the thing is that is that when, when your prospect has any doubts or concerns or they're, they're hesitating to move forward, you want to to relate with them. You want to empathize with them because most of your competitors, they're gonna kick back and try to get aggressive and go into closer mode. And you wanna be different. So you wanna be able to hear them out, don't interrupt them, let them exhaust themselves as to why they wanna hesitate. And sometimes they're gonna be very short, you know, very short, in short sentences. They're gonna say, oh yeah, I just wanna think about it. Got it, I completely understand that. This is definitely an important decision to make considering that your alternative option is to not save as much money as we discussed, is to continue paying more money than you need to. And since it's in direct correlation to how you end up this time next year, I completely understand because what your decision is at this point is gonna be is gonna determine where you're at this time next year. So that's definitely a lot to think about. But just curious, when you do think about it, what are the three topics that you're gonna think about? And if you ask them that way, they're gonna pinpoint exactly where you went wrong inside your discussion, where they still have doubts or they still have concerns. And the effective part about that is you get to address each and every single concern by going back over the, uh, the, the actual objections that they have or that they pay minds to, right? And, and the, the key thing is though, is that you wouldn't have gotten that if you went into closer mode, right? And you got aggressive or you got defensive. You know, I want you to pay attention to some of the salesmen around you. And I want you to pay attention to how some of them come off like, like Jordan Belfort, right? Like that type of image of a hardcore closer. And I want you to really pay attention to how they struggle. Now, they may not necessarily struggle, but they may make sales, right? Because they're persistent. Persistence is key. Anyone who's persistent will win. But at the same time, that person who, who's trying to be in a, like an aggressive closer, you're gonna notice that they work a gang of hours. Like they have to, they ha their close ratio is much smaller in perspective, even though close a lot, they, they actually close a little of a lot. That makes sense? So they have to do more work, more hours, more calls, more pitches. They have to do more of everything just to get the same result as if as that you can if you use the steps that I outline in like let's say banker's formula. Like the banker's formula 
is a perfect dissection of the banker's guide, right? Like from from marketing, originating, selling, um, uh, manipulating operations to help you build your pipeline and manage your pipeline. It's to show you how to delegate your responsibilities so that you can spend more time on what you want, whether it is sales or whether it is being with your family or whether it is not having to sacrifice a lot of the things that you do right now. And the reason why it's so effective is because it teaches you how to increase your close ratio. So in other words, you can close a lot of a little rather than a little of a lot, get it? And so besides that, you know, besides that having checked out before you go in for the close, another thing is you have to listen to their wording, right? Because they're gonna give you clues that they're ready to buy. And it's very possible that you just keep selling to the point where you've outsold them. <laughs> like they no longer wanna buy because sometimes we, we want to talk, right? We get excited. There's like this pump of adrenaline that, that bursts through us whenever we feel like we got a sale, right? There's this dialogue. And what the last thing you want to do is talk yourself out of the sale. So if they're not, if they start swerving off and, and, and not staying on track to go towards the actual close and allow you to, to begin your closing process, you want to bring them back. And sometimes it's, it's hard to figure out how to bring them back, right? Because sometimes our prospects, they'll just go on these rants. And, and it's rude to kind of, it, we, we're trying to figure, okay, well, how the hell do I get him back on track? Because, you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta break or I gotta get off the phone and, and make this phone call. And so the best effective way to bring them back on track is to do this. Oh, wait, hey, you reminded me before I forget and just go right back into it. <laughs> Again, the, the interruption is this, oh, you know what? You reminded me before I forget and go right back into getting back on track. And sometimes that, that, that dialogue is, um, you know, in order to ensure that we start and, and avoid any delays, let me go ahead and get this thing from you real quick. Um, I'm going to send you an email, a quick checklist of the items that I'm going to need in order to validate before I begin. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that I dot my I's and cross my T's. In other words, you want to make sure you're giving them certainty before we actually start the process. But here's the thing is that I'm going to need it, but before this time tomorrow, because the exception that I'm going to ask you or ask for you is actually not even available today. And, or I'm sorry, it's not going to be available for tomorrow. It's only available for today. And the key and the last check thing or the last thing that you want to check off, um, you know, before you go into a close is you want to understand what your boundaries are. And so there's this thing where I've noticed in my, in my career that there's a couple salesmen who take pride in selling, you know, full retail price. There's a, there's, there's a couple salesmen who's all about like, Hey, I, I don't need exceptions. Boo boo. Get those exceptions. <laughs> like if your company allows you to go this far, go that far. Right, like, don't try to be Captain Save Alone and try to be like, oh, I'm, I'm the fucking revenue uh, for my company. I, I don't need exceptions. Boo boo, get your pipeline up first before you try to be Captain Save Alone and shit, and 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 really feed yourself first. Because at the same time, if your company outlines boundaries and says your exception is to can go all the way up to here, take that shit. You know what I mean? Like, like take it until you are at that level where you're confident, where you can ramp up and you can you don't necessarily need to rely on that sale because if you're at a point where you got a massive pipeline, then go ahead and test the waters. Go ahead and be that booker that you wanna be. But if you know that your boundaries can go this far, understand that you could take it that far. But the key thing is though, is that you don't wanna take it that far to the prospect. You still wanna be you know, selling retail costs and you wanna start high, right? Knowing that you can come down. Because, because if you start low and you take it all the way to the boundaries and then you pitch that all the way low, there's no room to go from there. The perception is like, oh, that's it? That's you can get me? How do you come back from that, right? Instead, start high, use your boundaries as the low and as the footing of how to create the urgency. Because hey, this exception, I can get, it's only available today. I can go ahead and go all the way down to boundaries and but I'm gonna need your documents by tomorrow because you already know you can go down that low you see as you get better you're gonna be able to use half that boundary as you as you start but when you start off sometimes you're gonna to want to use the whole amount and the last thing I want you to do is to be Captain Save Alone and try to use no boundaries and be like I'm a booker I'm a closer <laughs> boo boo use it man if you and you don't feel bad you know what I mean don't feel bad like oh but my company you know they're gonna pay for it man if, if you wanted to work 12 hours, do you think your company's gonna say, hey, boo-boo, you know, just go ahead and work eight. You tried hard today. Your health comes first. You just go ahead and you work eight. Don't worry about overtime. Man, they're gonna make you work overtime, bro. They're gonna, they're gonna let you work out until your little heart 
pumps out, right? So you little heart desires. So so use that because it's a relationship that you have with your company. I'm not saying burn your company, right? But what I am saying is if your company allows you to go this far, go that far until you don't need to go that far. But understand that when you when you go in for the close, you need to know what your boundaries are because that is always going to be your kind of fallback plan and also your tool to create this urgency. And you got to build some sort of exclusivity to make them feel like they, they're getting it, not anyone else. Make sense? So make sure you do those things and I ensure you that you're going to increase your close ratio and have an easier time of making the close. If you want to go more further in depth with how these close techniques work and you want to create a literally a sales process that that builds the anticipation and takes your prospect regardless of what your cost is regardless of what your rate is regardless of your experience and you want to learn how to take them straight to the close with less friction less objections and less kind of grind if you will right like it's an easier process so that you can multiply those sales a lot it just depends on how how many you want and and it's all within the formula the bankers formula I'll leave a link below uh, the this video where it's gonna say formula to six figs and you're gonna want to check that out more importantly you're gonna want to invest in it use a credit card put put some money into yourself if you have if you have an opportunity to get a tool that teaches you how to create more income why not use it right like this is what you're gonna do anyway what are you gonna do take the hard route and and take your time and learn through trial and error I've already gone through that process boo boo let me show you what it's like to figure out the cheat code to this game called sales I'll see you inside bye Ooh, I'm high off the power. Ooh, she gone off the power. Yeah. Ooh, she wanted a powder. Yeah, yeah. yeah.